Harmon is apparently sprinting towards them. Yep. He sprints a whole whole meter. What is next up? Uh yeah, let me make sure Looks that I'm like it. Yeah. That's not it. That's two. Yeah. You're good. We're on we're in sync. <clears throat> Guards, ally guards, and then begins the battle music. I like it. I like it. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Let's see. My dudes are going to reload. And, uh. Right. Okay, yes. So. Uh, what is happening here? So the sheep uh, woman pulls out her flute that was recently purchased for her and begins playing a stirring melody. So that's what we mean by the battle music. And Harmon has posted this in the chat. So allies in combat are flanking their opponents. They may claim their tactics bonus, which is, is pretty cool. It basically means that Harmon can use his tactics dice without having anyone nearby him um and she's reeling okay how long does that last for one round i guess it's every round you would do it it would be a stunt again cool cool okay cool these guys are reloading and i think they are gonna guard as their second action because they could try to step back but honestly i Harmon is a fiend. Um, okay, and these guys are... As Harmon is closing the distance, uh, they have their swords out, I think. They might just take focus turns. Oh, right, and Harmon is yelling them to get the carts ready, and the oxen are going. They're... they're... Sprinting into action, getting the carts ready to pull out and make a run for it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you know what? I guess we're going to close the distance because you have reach and you're not going to close that far anyway. So let's see. They've got a dash of three and a stride of one. Four will get them close enough. So they're going to come up to you and they're going to guard. Okay, that's it for me. All right. Okay. Ally repeats with guarding, oh, without guarding. Harmon guards and then attacks. Okay. Pick your favorite left one or right one first and All Right. Have them defend. Yikes. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, they're going to... This is one rule that I, I just... I'm sorry, guys. It's not sticking in my head. Do you get your guard... Do you get your guard bonus on your counterattacks? You do. Yes. You do. Okay. Then we're going to try to counterattack because might as well. So, uh, countering with 2d6 and a d12... I could get lucky. I don't know. That doesn't look like lucky. And it's not what I would consider <laughs> to be luck, but depends One, on the broadness two, of your interpretation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's see if it's an overkill. We've this... got 2d6 and a d10. The other man might get frightened from overkill. and the... <laughs> Okay, it drops to five, which means just dead, not overkilled. Blech. And then sweep. And then there sweep. Is. So we'll do it again. Uh, counter 2d6 d12. Not good enough. One, two, three, four. Uh, 
plus two is four. Once again, okay. Ooh, a reroll. Very nice. <clears throat> okay. And uh, enough to turn it into just dying. Ugh, bleh. Just a flesh wound. You'll get better. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's it for me. Or, uh, well, that's it for Harmon. <laughs> oh, now right. That's it for Harmon. have to decide what to do. Yeah, right. Well, they're going to drop their guard and reload and back the fuck up. And spread what? out. Get farther from Harmon? No. They can try. They're they're very slow in their armor, so it's not great. Um, let's do let's roll some sprint dice though. I'm gonna roll three d six. We'll go left to right. Uh, three three and four. So this guy can move four total up here. This guy can move four as well. We'll just move back. And this guy is gonna move eight to here. He's gonna move this way though. Ooh, and that's it daring. for me. Try to keep them from weep range. This might not have done it, but eh. Ally plays an inspiring song. I'm getting lucky with these sprint rolls. Running, okay. Okay, <laughs> we're going to try to shoot the shit out of you. Um, we're going to aim. We'll start with number three. Aim for a d12. Um, I can't imagine that ranged attacks threaten for, like, tactics bonus purposes. So They do not. Only do not, melee right? attacks threaten. Yeah, okay. So each of these is going to be 2d6 and a d12. Here comes the first one. I don't know. They're not rolling that many dice. Um, it's all I can do. Okay, so you dodge the first one. Here comes the second one. 2d6 and a d12. Seven. Seven's not bad. It doesn't beat your eight. Last but not least, let me just make sure this guy, in terms of range, is within short range, but he's outside of near range. And then... So you can take a d8 on this one. I got the nine. <sighs> okay, can you, I guess, can you claim cover? You have a shield? Okay. Funk. Yep. Arrow That's embeds what, itself into your shield. That's what shields are for. All right, Harmon. It's your time now. Your uh, oxen have just about made way. They'll be ready at the end of this round to take off. Okay. All right. So, stride. our guy number four in the corner is going to use their action to reload uh, and um, guard or move. I think he's just going to try to stay as far away from you as he can. So, he's going to move four paces back. Four paces is not that many paces, but he's going to do it. So, that's it for him. These guys are each going to drop their uh, crossbows. 
and draw their swords. Dropping is free. Um, and the problem is that you are with or outside of their reach. So I think they're both going to draw their swords and guard. They still don't have a great shot, but I want to give them the best shot they can get. Okay. One of the oxen will whistle to alert you, Harmon, that they're ready to go. They've got a clear path, and uh, they're ready to book it for the exit. All right. Yeah, one of the ox will, uh, he'll nod knowingly. You seem to have this in hand. He'll, yeah, the Dre, and they will, uh, take off. I'll say that they had making ready to leave is like packing up your tents and everything. So you guys make it with all of your supplies. Um, is, I assume Hua Jiao is sticking with you though. And you're recovering from reeling, repeating and attacking. Go for it. Uh, sorry, I should say, these guys are going to try to counterattack. 2d6 and a d12. Could get lucky. Ooh, yeah, I got the 11. Okay. All right, Wouldn't I think... that be closer to counterattack, though? Oh, that's right, because they're not within threatening range. So never mind, I guess. That'll be a parry instead of an attack. Um, So he'll parry it, but I think... Doesn't count as a as a hit though for sweeping purposes. Uh, that would be right. Yep. Either so way, done. Okay. Back over here, my dude is going to finish reloading. And I suppose he's going to guard. Nah, he's going to take another some more steps back. Put some space between you two. Um, all right, so now what do these guys do? They need to close, so they need to stride and attack, which sucks because they're never going to hit you. So I guess what they're going to... Hmm. Stride up. We'll take a swing. This is what these guys know how to do. They're going to try to to flank you. Do they have tactics dice? They do have tactics dice. I'll take it. Okay, countering the first one. Uh, is it just going to be 3d6? Oh, no. <laughs> I know. It's not, it's not great. Yeah, there you go. I see. Four damage counter. Four damage. All right. These poor typicals. Ooh, ugly. All right. So four damage puts him to dying. And now the other one doesn't have tactics. And now the other one is just rolling 2d6. Oh, it's terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> you fools. Two nines go through. I think that looks like another four. Five. Throw a six in there. Oh, yep, I missed the six. Okay, cool. Five. Yep, four also dying. Ugh. Okay. In a wide arc. Cuts down the two standing guards. Guarding and running. Give him some blood pools there. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay. Well, they'll they'll get bigger over time. <laughs> ah! All right. Our last guy is going to um, step back and try to fire at you point blank. I think. I mean, can you? Uh, sorry. Are there? Is there penalties for firing at like close range? Uh, uh no. Nope. The, so it would make the, sense. The disadvantage of firing at close range is if your opponent has a melee weapon, they can counter you. Right. So he Ooh. might want to uh, sprint away or something to that effect. You can just dash, guys. You can also or dash. dash. I'll probably yeah, just dash. 
Dash actually means he gets far you, enough you, away. You, 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 you want to back up a few paces. Harmon's a giant, which I believe gives him a reach of uh, two paces. Yeah. So you want to back up at least three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, you know what? I think for the sake of this, every one of his friends has been just cut down by this guy and they haven't left a scratch on him. And now this dude with his sword. You, do this, you could just run. I think he's just going to run. I think that's what it is. I think he would guard run. Um, he can't get very far, though, Harmon. I don't know if you want to pursue him. Actually, Harmon doesn't pursue people who are running for their lives, right? Um, uh, Harmon's not being paid to kill these people. Exactly. So the guard will drop his crossbow and turn and scamper away. Um, Harmon, you can see that the wagon is pulling away, but you could probably catch up to it. It's not, it hasn't gotten that far. Yeah. Right. He's paid to protect the carts, not run after people. Cool. Running after the cart. So you're running through the streets of Three Corner Fort. You can see in the distance the gate. Um, this is a, you're getting uh deja vu from your time escaping was it um enclume i think enclume when you guys were running from the dungeons well Um, i feel feel kind of bad so this is a fort so what i'm gonna have to do if they're gonna escape is i'm gonna have to stop them from closing this is a fort so it's gonna have two gates now one of the uh, there might only be one of the gates still in operation because running two gates at the same time is a big pain in the butt. Yeah. So uh, requires more I, manpower. Well, and also a porticulus, uh, you know, this is the era before stainless steel, and even in the era of stainless steel, that's a mechanism that needs to be lubed. Uh, mm. No, I mean, like when you say all gates, there would be, uh, I mean, like, for example, when you say there is three way traffic, since it's not really a fort anymore, they may have dismantled walls. But they probably don't want people leaving in the middle of the night and not paying. So what it probably is, is there's only one gate that you come in and out of and that they make you wait. And normally, if it was a fort, you'd have two gates because you would have, you know, the bailey. Yeah, like airlock thing, right? Like an airlock thing. That way, when people yeah. broke through the first gate, they would have to break through the second gate to get in. Um, but they probably gave up on that outer gate and they probably just have the inner gate. Uh, you would have to go all the way around the fort and get in. Who gives a care about you? You know, it's, uh, I mean, the fort, it's a, it's a fort. It's designed to be defensible. It's not an actual city. So, um, yeah, basically what Connor got attacked for. Um, and, um, I mean, I don't know. You could also do it as too. But anyway, we have to get out the gate. So I want to go stop the people from closing the gate. Now, yes. that's a question of whether they have a gate that's two doors that go open and closed, in which case you would need for a team of like at least two people to push that shut. Or if they still have the porticulus working, which is the door that goes up and down on the hinges, which they might still have because they were originally a fortress. I like that idea. I think that's dramatic and it also makes sense for the history of the place. Well, the they still have center. that, and what I need to do is I need to fly up there and I need to jam the mechanism to keep that from uh, uh, closing. So I need Sounds to go like ahead and craft uh, the mechanism. Yep. Yep. Sounds to me like that would be craft, um, yep. possibly that's body. That's definitely, oh, yep, craft and body. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Let's We're ready for this. Try. Wow, that is actually one that success. Success. That's it. Okay, um, you jam I it. Only sabotage it long enough. Uh, so if I can throw something into the mix, like a wooden stake or something in the chain, to just jam it, so yeah. they can get through, and then they can break after they get through. If one success is good enough for that. Yeah, it's definitely not a permanent sabotage, but it'll hold long enough to give you guys a window to get through. And then they come up here and say, "Hey, what are you doing up there?" It's like, oh, "I'm out of here." Yeah. Um, I don't yep. know if any of the gate people would shoot at me or not. The gate people are just taking orders. They don't really understand what's going on or why we're de- they're trying to detain you guys. And as far as they know, you're a third party who just showed up out of the sky and started messing. So they're shocked, but they're not ready to fire back at you. You can get I mean, in there, do it, there, and get out. There, there are many reasons why we could be leaving. They could have found uh, yeah. untaxed goods. Uh, or contraband in our wagon. We could be stealing a wagon. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's plenty of reasons to stop us. Whether they would take a pot shot at me, I don't know. They possibly would because they would have crossbow. They would. Um, but yeah. I think that you manage. They're a little bit confused. Their, their attention isn't on you. So when this happens, they're, they're more concerned with getting the mechanism fixed. Um, and now if anybody we knew was driving this thing, I would ask for a roll um, to get past right, these yeah. guys at the gate without damaging the cart. But because our ox drivers are the ones driving... Ox drivers, typicals, they're um, drivers, and there's two of them assisting each other. Yeah. Oh, um, there, there is a train team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, they're trained oh, okay, for this. So. It's the trained guys. Okay, good. Yeah, they should be able to pull this off, I would think. You can make them make a roll because there might be people in the way or something. And that's what it is. There's people who are trying to, like, block you from leaving the guards at the gate or trying to block you from going through. Go ahead and roll the 2d6 then. So, okay, let's do it. Oh, yeah, we're, uh, well, Connor's war cart is with him, right? Yeah, yeah, they're not. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay. The Uh, carriage. This is Otis's carriage. This is Otis's. uh, uh, Right. Wagon. Where's our wagon? I have to assume it's with you guys as well. Who's driving that? Currently, nobody is, I guess. Uh, I guess Um, we're leaving you behind because. You might be. uh, (laughs) I'm not going back for it, and the doctor's not here. They still got wheels, so. You'd be down one. Your caravan will be a little bit lighter, but uh, they were probably going to impound it anyway because I told them it belonged to Connor. It's a fair, it's a fair point. Okay, here we go. Um, I want one success from these ox drivers. Um, we're going to roll two d six and a d eight for the assist. Yep. And if they can get through with one success, no damage. Otherwise, the carts are going to take some damage, which might slow you guys down. But you'll be able to get out. So here we go. Yeah. No one died of dysentery, so we're so oh, oh. Blue fly. we damn these guys should do all the rolling. Yeah, they just <laughs> drive through and uh like it ain't no thing. Yeah. They get that uh they get that cart up on two wheels, they knock over one of the guards, and boom, they are through. Anushka owes me a cart. Dude, I committed treason for you. <laughs> all right. Um, and you guys are free of Three Corners Fort. Um, you can see several of the guards shouting, um, messing with the porticullis, but they are in no, in no position to pursue you any further. But you're sure that you haven't made any more friends at uh, Triskelion. Okay. And you're on the road again! Um, it's a few hours before you come across a uh, spot on the road where uh, I don't I forget if Raphael was the scout, but we'll say that one of Connor's irregulars was like hanging out incognito waiting for the rest of you to catch up. But uh, oh, and we still need to get the doctor and uh, yep, Otis we're still in there. there. <laughs> so somehow the doctor. The doctor and Otis. Uh, I'm going to to wrap this up pretty quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell Otis, uh, you know, just keep driving. I'll get them up to speed. But this is with me. <laughs> and then I'll I'll go rendezvous with Connor's crew and tell them what we've witnessed and tell them you've got to start rolling because they'll be coming after you. Yeah. So. That's some time uh, pressure. We're gonna have to beat you, uh, Doc and Otis. You guys are on your own to get out of the fort. This will be fun. Yep. All right. Well, it's okay, fun so time. <laughs> Otis is uh oh, he is not happy. The old Otis is back as you wake up in the morning and he's a uh, uh, Where in the where in the seven hells are we? Now, I don't know why he's Irish now. <laughs> he's but he's awake. That's what the drink does to you, you know. <clears throat> he says, What? Where's my Why aren't we in the camp? What are you doing? He kicks you out of bed. Ah, well, it's a good thing I finished my morning prayers while still lying down. <laughs> well, uh, I believe a few things happened, and it turns out some of us were more wanted than we originally thought we were. So I believe I just saw them escaping out through the gate. If you can, like, look through the window, you can kind of see the trail they left behind. And what? He well, jumps. To we're the going out to walk out. He squints. He says. 
That's my caravan! That would be. I imagine they'll probably go up the road and wait for us, but we should eventually make our way out. I believe if we simply exhibit a little bit of patience and a bit of mindfulness, uh, together we can walk out and no one will be any the wiser. You damned it, fool! You, you devil from hell! How you declare to serve the light, I... Oh, ah! He's quite distraught. Um, it's going to keep now, him calming down. Now, now, I already have a plan. I've been without as much of a hangover as you seem to have, and I've been thinking for a while this morning, and I already have a brilliant plan. Uh, he has been pacing back and forth, but it seems to be disagreeing with him, and he lies down and closes his eyes and just says, Tell me your plan. Uh, while I do Softly. it, I'm going to take the like, ice I've already like uh, ordered up, put it on his head, and let it just rest for a little bit while he's uh, lying down. Well, you see, it's quite simple. They're looking for uh, uh, someone who looks like me who's a preacher, and they're maybe looking like someone like you who looks like a driver. Simply by switching outfits, you can hide your face and appearance, and I can take on a my normal persona. Not the one, of course, of which I am one of the cloth. He peeks open an eye and kind of sizes you up, and he says, Don't mean any disrespect, but there's no way I'd be caught dead in those robes. That might not be a choice. <laughs> then he... <laughs> looks down at himself and you realize that uh, there's no universe in which you fit into any garment that he is wearing. <laughs> no, that's perfect. <laughs> A commoner wearing horribly ill-fitting dirty clothing? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to reconcile the shapes in my head here and do some basic, like geometry of it because it, it can be it, open vest okay okay yeah just armadillos are very rad creatures <laughs> right and this goat Some is more very tiny than others. yeah i like it though okay i like it it's gonna give you there's gonna be penalties for not standing out though this goes beyond this commoner woke up in it and someone stole his clothes this is like you're mm. almost naked <laughs> trying to and this goat is wearing what basically looks like uh curtains well well i mean i don't just wear a robe and nothing underneath i imagine i have at least like a basic like white shirt and some trousers or something to that effect i'm yes, essentially I'm, taking wait, wait, like wait. his vestment and his adornments and using that to decorate the normal clothing actually i hmm. wouldn't have to ask why would you wear anything underneath the robe he's a civilized armadillo <laughs> I am a civilized armadillo, thank you. And now we have the period underwear conversation. Ah, uh, yes, of, of time. course. I mean, uh, well, yeah, we're covered in fur, guys. True, this is a fair I'm not. That's... Speak I for have, yourself. I have brown, pasty skin. And Bond armor. Skin. Uh, of course, I don't know why I'm making an issue out of this. When we elided over it, where the book doesn't say anyone is naked, we say they are sky-clad. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I like that. I guess <laughs> maybe nice it's not so weird. I like it. Right? Maybe uh, it's not still, so weird for people not to be wearing uh, clothes. One of my favorite furry books is Spellsinger, which is a big influence on us. And they mm -hmm. point out that in Spellsinger, it's like, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to be naked in a world where everybody's covered freaking fur. Um, but... Um, yeah, no. Um, uh, mostly we wear clothes because we, you know, need pockets. Um, so. Pockets are handy. So, uh, so we are essentially exchanging outfits here. My robe is probably more than bulky enough for him for whatever else he's wearing uh, underneath, and that'll be fine. And as long as he pulls the hood up and we could probably just walk out of here because I have low profile and I'll probably be leading this endeavor. Yeah, he looks like a Jawa. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, here, go ahead and take this chat book. And if anyone asks you any questions, just ask them if they've heard the word of word of Salumer, and they will turn away and pay no attention. It's the ultimate disguise. 
Okay. All right. So you guys are uh, low profile. I'm just going to guess it's a D12 bonus to like stealthing and to avoiding. It's a, it's a D12 bonus to not look important. Gotcha. Right. So it's, it's not an actual, because there's a crowd, it gives you a bonus that you can blend in with people who are there. Doesn't it? So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it would actually here. give you a bonus to ninja into a castle, but it would give you a bonus to blend in with the crowd. To just walk Perfect. out with all the other commoners here, basically. Yeah. Okay. If so, roting is good enough, well, then well, people could probably later just walk was, without trouble. Yeah. I saw them, but I didn't think they were important. Yeah. Uh, I guess it depends on, do you think this is a road, or should I roll? Well, I'm going to tell you that um, they're curious. You were seen with Anushka. They are going to be looking for you. I would want two successes. If you could get that with a rote. I, I guess maybe I'm not supposed to tell you that if you're taking rote. No, it, it's fine. Well, I mean, like, the offer is there. Like, the rote is if there's if I have the freedom to do that. Otherwise, it is. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give them... The, the road's supposed to be for something that, that is unquestioned, yeah. and this is not okay. unquestioned. Okay, so, then. let's so go ahead and start building the role, then. But you can... And you can... So, let's say, yeah, let's pull up Otis's uh, stats. So, I suppose I'm looking at Will here to impress upon everyone that I am who I am. Yes. Um, I'm considering stealth. I think uh, stealth might be the thing. Stealth or deceit? I don't know. What do you think? Uh, fortunately, I have neither of those. Oh, yeah. That simplifies I things. could, if you would allow me, to spend a four experience to grab one of them right now. Oh, yeah. Certainly. This would be the time for it. Sure. Tell you what. I'll grab, I'll grab deceit. I feel like lying is something I'm better at than hiding. Yeah. So I will now have an additional D4, which may or may not help. Uh, and I'm yeah. going to make sure I mark that I spent that. Very important. All right. And then additional things. So he is assisting me. Yes, he's so going whether to... Whether or not I get the D8 is going to matter. He's going to roll. He just has a D6. So let's see what we get. Hey, it's your lucky day. Ooh, there we go. Love the D8. And I will like to ask for one more additional die here, because I am not anonymous, I am William. (laughs) You're looking for a doctor who's taken a vow to not have a name? What are you talking about? I'm I'm just William. I'm good William. Well, not good William. Maybe short William? Fat William? So this exhausts I'm exhausting my anonymity for the day to pass as a person who has a name and not the weird anonymous doctor. (laughs) I like it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you could take a bonus for that. Uh, what kind of bonus? Probably a D8. Yeah, a D8. I think D8. a D8. You're still an armadillo. You know, there's no denying that. But it's good. All right, let's do it. One, two, hey. three, four. <laughs> All right. Not only do you does your plan work splendidly, much to the chagrin of tall Otis, but you actually basically get pushed through to the head of the line. They're so eager to question the commoners getting out behind you that they just push you through and you, you barely get held up. It takes less than an hour or two before you are, uh, well, before you make it to the, the rendezvous point where mm-hmm. Connor's men have been waiting for you and uh, rejoin with the rest of the group. Otis will, uh, he's going to throw off He's going to throw off the robes pretty much as soon as you guys are clear of sight. Right, and And of course, I'll take mine and I'll dust it off and I'll gently hand his back over to him with care. (laughs) Might be a little bit stretched, but I I think it's none the worse for wear. He says, I can assure you this. We're going to make it to our, our goal, but you won't ever be working for the Dubois Company on any basis, contract or otherwise, so long as I have say about it. Oh no, how terrible. Please, no, don't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll enjoy my time with you nonetheless. <laughs> and maybe rumbles. we can at least go drinking once we reach Harrogate. Uh, he uh, nods and then vomits at the notion of drinking. Um, 
But then oh, not you might some want more. a little bit of this charcoal. Then there you go. <laughs> Despite all of his best efforts, it's just hard to stay mad, at the Doctor. Or I should say, should I say, William? Ah, yes. Poor, poor William. Constantly in over his head. Okay. We're just about out of time for today, but let me see. Let me check my system. Okay. We're not going to get into it because I do want to have time for the debrief. But as you guys reconvene and get ready to set out the uh, Otis will push his way to the front of the caravan. Um, he'll push one of the oxen down and you'll say, you know, get off your, your, uh, you're, you're bending the, my seat pointing to the, the driver's seat on the wagon that has been straining under the weight of the ox. And he says, without me, you'd all be lost and done for. And then he, yeah, pushes off ahead. His wagon takes the lead. Um, I assume you guys have to break the news to Connor that he has lost his cart, his carriage for the time being. It will be impounded. Well, literally, they, do they know? It's already been broken and repaired a few times, so it's already lost its market value. Joke's on them. Well, more importantly, uh, yeah, no, they weren't. Uh, when they came to arrest us, I told them it was your wagon because uh, I I have the proof of sale. They're, they were going to boot that thing. We were not going to get out of there. Uh, the medieval boot. So, uh, yeah, medieval boot called a log. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, um, no, I mean, we know where it is. They've impounded it. I'm sure they've impounded it because it has resale value. Right. Uh, and, and that way, when they uh, sell it, uh, you know, they'll get money for it. I mean, it's a functional wagon. Well, Sir Connor, at least you have the war wagon. You still have the war wagon. You still have your stuff. And uh, you still so have me. You are welcome. Uh, so they're going to, if this is anything like medieval law, they'll impound it and hold it for 30 days, during which you can go dispute that you own it. Uh, the problem being that if you show up to say that you own it, they will arrest you. Right. There is that. You could send one of your minions to go claim it, which would be hilarious. Um. Well, uh, welcome to the Iron Claw stream, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you enjoyed Game of Thrones, if you loved the Star Wars prequels, boy, do we have bureaucracy for you. Um. Yeah. So, uh, you might just have to write that off. Uh, uh be, we could go pick it up on the way back. I mean, after all, we're gonna be back in thirty days can stage a, a carriage breakout um it's yeah. worth a lot it's worth like what 160 plus 40 each for the drays i have to look this up it's a lot of money i mean it depends on where you go after after harrogate um yeah, yeah i don't think, think it would necessarily know, be 30 days be, uh, not an impossible task it was hard enough just getting out of there you might want to take the long way around if we're heading back. But the we'll figure that out once we get to Harrogate, won't we? Yes. Yeah, and you know what? We are we are going to end it there for today with mm -hmm. you guys pressing onwards into the uh yeah, yeah, the deepest darkest part of the Vias Lutus. Um yeah, okay. So, uh good session everybody. We kind of split the party every way we could, but I, I think everyone got to do something at least. So that's something. I, I think it worked out and it was very natural. Yeah. Yeah. Try everyone not to succeeded so in their own way. Connor and Harmon by fighting literally everyone in their way, then the doctor by avoiding all conflict. And then yeah. by just being a bat and thus being superior to all other species. Yeah. Showing your uh your superior. style rap prowess. He would uh, we okay. celebrate our fraternity. <laughs> okay, so debriefing time. Um, 
once again, I think everyone has had a chance to play to their motto. Um, I wonder, maybe Connor, but no, I think it's fine. Uh, Connor didn't get a lot of action. To, uh, the action that Connor got was all guns, uh, gunfighting. Um, right, but he split off so that he would only deal with the consequences he had to deal with and allow others to not suffer for him. Fair point. That's a very cooperative move. Okay. All right. Uh, in terms of gifts, I don't believe you guys managed to complete your current outstanding gift. Halfway uh, there. And when I say gifts, I mean goals. Apologies. <laughs> I always do that. Um, I do have another goal that didn't really show up this session, but it will show up next session. So. I, All right. I should, probably I when it's appropriate, guilty. which is going to be uh, the bandits, I assume. As possible. It's actually not exactly that, but yes. The uh, and, and for the past several sessions, you guys have been cleaning up in terms of goal completion. I feel so mm. bad. Um, and yet I still have so much more to go. <laughs> still have a lot you need to, to accomplish. We should talk at some point about what the end game is like. Like, at what point do you just... I don't think in the book there's like a point where you're just done, right? You could keep collecting gifts until there's no more gifts to collect in this game. I mean, uh, you, you, you could eventually... technically get over D12s, I believe, correct? No, you well, can't. Well, then you just get multiples of D12s, right? In, 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 yeah, in Iron Claw 1, we let people go over D12, and 2, we don't. We debated it and said ah. no. It causes okay. huge problems. So, no, eventually... Gotcha. Uh, I mean, you could eventually get all of your attributes up to D12 and then just keep buying gifts. But most, um, we didn't actually have a built in sunset for it. I'm yeah, noticing marks, that's where I saw more, it. You could get more marks forever. A, a lot more RPGs these days are building in a theory the, uh, of endgame, which I think is, is, you know, a good idea. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, endgame is when our story ends. Right. Yeah. Cool. More so than everyone having D12 spot at the end of it. Yeah, right. I mean, and that's that's how I would like to approach it, too. Um, yeah, I think the last Iron Claw game we had, my Fire Mage got as far as getting a fireball, and then it ended. Oh, okay. So it's whatever is appropriate. Cool. Cool, cool. Well, we've been doing strong. I think this is our 20th session, or we're coming up on our 20th. I think this was our 19th session, I, I think. Got 36 experience, so that's like 18 that this character has been around. Right. So 20 is correct, yeah. So that's two that Gaston was in, and then more for this one. Yeah, yeah. Cool, okay. Well, um... I really count through all the sessions it's been on my... Uh... XP chart eventually. Mm -hmm. I think I, yeah, and I think I miscounted somewhere. I keep um, recaps, uh, but at some point along the way, I made up a recap. So mm -hmm. my count is not perfect. But in any case, um, yeah, I feel like I kind of maybe steamrolled the debrief a little bit, and we do have plenty of time. So if there's anything anyone would like to add before we do. Um, plugs and wrap this up now is the time to do it uh, uh, um i mean i know i joked about it but uh worlds where there are politics and things happen for like like, like sensible reasons like some of this stuff will happen because you know gamery reasons because you want the game to move on and some of this happen for um you know like story reasons or plot reasons because it's boring <laughs> you know the michael bay reasoning of it doesn't matter what's happening as long as things are happening and, uh, you know, I, uh, I think we're uh, like a, a demanding crew because we we like wandering around and meeting people and talking to them uh, and, and interacting with a world that that has a lot of cynical or uh, dark humor of bureaucracy mm -hmm. and the drudgery details. Um, but that's I mean, that's what appeals to me. So I don't want to, you know, hold anyone else back. But the idea that, you know, we wander around and meet people, interact with them, uh, and the the world has sensible stakes and that sort of thing uh, is something that be, and I, I like. That's why I enjoy stuff like this. Otis is a believable character. When we get to the fort, you know, they, um, 
it's usually pretty tricky in a game to grab players and make them submit to authority, but mm-hmm. we're mature players. So we, you know, I, I rolled with it because that's what you do. Uh, you know, you don't, uh, you don't always take up arms against everyone. Um, and, um, I, I like, I, uh, I, th- I think this escalated in a proper and dramatic fashion. So I'm having fun. Right, and despite like all like you said, like the drudgery or realism of it all, we did get our action set pieces and have high drama involved, and I, even had yeah. our Rosenstein and Gilderstein. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We threw no, like the I'm supposed to be cute and effervescent, which is a push for me. I think you, I think you're nailing <laughs> it with it's a Nishka. You're natural, right? No, really. I, I, I love I, that set piece. I'm usually pretty dark Gosh. and mean. So. Uh, like I chose phlegmatic, which is like someone with like a very stoic-ish personality, right? Like very, very even and unconcerned. And then here yeah. I am, like cracking jokes at everything. You're not phlegmatic. <laughs> I'm not personally <laughs> phlegmatic. It is a it's a hard stretch. If you're if you're phlegmatic, you'd be a lot more like Eeyore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you might want to consider changing your personality because I don't. I don't think you've ever come off as phlegmatic. I will definitely yeah. accept like uh, new Anyone? descriptors that fit more appropriately to how I've been. Uh, I feel like melancholy is like good. intellectual, but like sad. Like melancholy is intellectual and sad. Sanguine is like action oriented, and then choleric is like one of Melancholy doesn't necessarily mean you have to also be sad about it. Yeah, Sanguine's yeah. literally hot blooded. I would, I would posit evangelical as a personality because you're constantly talking about how great your religion is. That's fair. Yeah, and you're very personable. Evangelical. There we go. Start calling you Prester John. <laughs> it's Will I am. Uh, I, I, yeah, I can't believe you made the ultimate sacrifice of accepting a name. There you go. And yeah, to to go back to what you had said, I'm definitely the Michael Bay action oriented approach when it comes to storytelling. As long as something's happening, I'm happy. Um, and I think that was some of the rub that we had in earlier sessions for me that I had because I had that I feel that pressure to like mm-hmm. present the world and be able to have all of the answers. But since then, I've just I've accepted that you guys know a lot and care a lot about this. And as long as you're willing to step in and add that flavor to the world, I'm willing to work. With. And right, I think it's, it's, a good it's participatory storytelling. Exactly, exactly. And I like that. I, I've been very much enjoying this so far. Mm-hmm. Cool, right. okay. So, uh, let's talk about uh, plugs for stuff. Um, I have a page where I am available to host games for money as a professional GM. I'm currently offering my services for Iron Claw 2nd Edition and Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. You can find me at startplaying.game slash gm slash oracular pig. One word. All right. Uh, Rafferty, you want to do your shout out? Yeah. Well, I, I work for sanguinegames.com. Uh, we're still working on getting Book of Corals out the door. I know I keep saying that, but we are. <laughs> uh, and uh, we also sell many fine games and some questionable ones. All right. And of course, everybody, uh, thank you for being here. I'm Griffin, and this is Theta. We run the stream here. And uh, uh, come back Sunday for more Dragon Age and more uh, Dungeons and Dragons, where more things happen, uh, more adventure things like this. Uh, and most days, we'll have Wicked One coming up next and Only War. Uh, both are on hiatus at the moment, but uh, be sure to come back next week for them. Okay. Once again, right, thanks so everyone it. for being here. Thanks for running, Red, and we'll catch you all next time. Thanks for playing, guys. See ya. Yeah, thanks, Red.